and welcome to Mobile UX Marathon. It's a weekly webinar on how to improve mobile user experience and conversion rate. Today, GA for UX discusses how you can use Google Analytics to understand and enhance mobile user experience. Before I begin, I wanted to quickly introduce myself. I'm Nupur and I work as a measurement specialist at Google. And I've worked closely with Google Analytics for the last five years. Also, to make this webinar more effective, I invite you to participate by opening your Google Analytics account and creating these reports with me. If you have any notes or questions, leave them on the Marathon website. We will be covering these questions as part of the live stream. Details about the live stream, resources, and the Marathon and the webinars will be there in the video's description below. In today's agenda, we will be discussing how you can see your website through your visitors' eyes, understand user behavior, but also repair the funnel, along with covering your questions that you leave on the Marathon website. We will also be learning how to build a measurement plan and understand KPIs on our live stream. So I hope to see you all there. The fundamental question today that we begin with is, should I care about mobile? The intuitive answer to this question is yes. But what data we do, do we need to back this up or to support this? The first report that we look at today is device report. It is found under audience, mobile, and overview. The insight that we can look at this report, as you see on the screen, is traffic share, revenue share, and conversion share. It also shows the revenue opportunity or the revenue building opportunity. For example, let's say you have 45% of your users on mobile, but only 20% or 28% of the revenue attributed to those users. That's an opportunity gap to be filled right there. It also gives you an idea that if the shift or the split is too big between mobile and desktop, then maybe you can have a mobile first strategy or just have mobile as a complementary strategy. But it helps you build a strategy around mobile and desktop. The second report that I'd like you to look at is found under audience benchmarking devices. Some of the insights that are found in this report are average session duration, pages per session. Please be very careful while using benchmarking reports, because even though there are businesses that are similar in your industry, they could have really different websites. Some websites could have all the content spread out between multiple pages, while other websites may have a long scroll depth. But the idea here is to encourage you to set some data benchmarks, whether you use Google Analytics, internal insights, or third-party insights. It is good to have data benchmarks to set up your mobile or des desktop comparisons with. Now that we have answered the question for whether or not mobile is important, which it is, the second question is, what should we prioritize? We know that the resources and the efforts are limited. So which, which parts or segments or dimensions should we begin with? We look at three reports. But the first report to answer this question or help us answer this question is prioritizing pages for UX improvement. This is an all pages report found under behavior site content. We will look at two major insights here, page views and page value. Once you obtain a product of page views and page value, which is once you find a product of page views and page value, you know which are the landing pages or which are the pages on your website which are most valuable to you in terms of revenue generation. I just wanted to point this out that if you do not have e-commerce setup or goal value setup, you will not have a value under page value, in which case you can use bounce rate or page views as a proxy. The second report that helps us prioritizing this is landing pages report segmented for mobile. You will find this report again under behavior site content, and you can apply a segment for mobile users. What we see here is the bounce rate. 
Now, I know that bounce rate for mobile traffic is higher than desktop in all of the cases. But what's important here to notice is where is the difference the biggest or the gap the biggest? Because it shows that that is where we can start filling the gap. If there are certain landing pages which have a very high difference in the bounce rate on mobile versus desktop, we can try to complete that journey ourselves and see what part in user experience is not matching in consistency. The third report here is, are we providing differential experience to different users based on screen resolution? The report which we are looking at is audience, technology, browser, and OS screen resolution. Again, one of the things to notice here is e-commerce conversion rate. You could look at the session that you have, which is coming from different screen resolution, prioritize the session with highest share, so top five screen resolutions, and look at the e-commerce conversion rate. If you see differences there, that is another revenue opportunity. One of the things is to make sure that your call to action buttons and action areas stay in natural areas, or what we mean to say is easy to reach for each of these prioritized high value screen resolutions. Now that we have few dimensions which are prioritized, the next question to answer is, what happens when user arrive on my website? What that basically means is, post click, what is the experience that we are providing to users? And is it consistent with the messaging that the user receives before coming to the website? The first report that will help us check for consistency and experience is the behavior site content landing pages report. The first step on this report is to provide all the segments for different traffic sources. So we have organic traffic, paid traffic, referral traffic, direct traffic. You could also switch up the segments based on what are the most important traffic sources for your business. What we are looking here in the first screenshot or the screenshot on the top is the bounce rate. The idea here is to narrow down which traffic source has the highest bounce rate or is out of the norm or average. In the second screenshot, what we have done is we've chosen that narrowed down traffic source, which is desktop paid traffic, and compared it with mobile paid traffic. We see the differential is again coming from a mobile experience. So once you have discovered an issue in a specific traffic source, you can segment your data and try to provide a unique value proposition for your users depending on which source you're obtaining them from. So for example, if you're showing a display ad to a user, can you use the same banner once they land on your website or your desktop? The second report, which I find is very fundamental into answering a post-click answer, is site search usage. The report here that we are looking at is found under behavior, site search, and usage. What we see here is, in the screenshot, visits without site search and visits with site search. So we have segmented our visits based on site usage. Then we are looking at sessions and e-commerce conversion rate. If you see in the second highlighted section, which is visits with site search, you will see that the e-commerce conversion rate is higher than the first column which is visits without site search. What point this proves is that for users, it's highly valuable or your content is highly valuable if they have site search. And so it's important that when your users arrive on your website, the site search is prominent and exposed as it does give them value and helps them remove the friction to complete their purchase journey. The next report that we look at is showing relevant categories on the home page. I find this insight really valuable because it gives you, as a company, a viewability into what is really important for your customers. What are the categories they are interested in? 
This report is under behavior, site content, all pages, content grouping. I just wanted to add a point that content groups can be set up and we have attached all the resources in this set that will be sent on as resources and will be on the website. So do not worry if you do not have content grouping set up as of now. But once you have content groups, you can see what are the different categories that users are interested in and have higher traffic in. Once you multiply page view with page value, you receive the most valuable categories in terms of revenue generation. In that case, you can start exposing different categories based on users landing on mobile or desktop. As with all reports, you can again segment this data with mobile traffic. We have been talking about personalizing experience. The last three reports that we looked at also help us do just that, which is to identify different segments of customers. The fourth segment of customer, which is also a very important segment to look at, is new versus returning users. The report we are looking at is behavior, events, top events. So if you do not have event tracking set up currently, again, there are steps to do that attached in the resources. But the report we are looking here at shows us unique events, total events, and different events based on new users and returning users. If there are some actions on your website that users are more interacting with, which have a higher value, it makes sense for your brand to show a homepage slider, according to the screenshot that we have here. So it's important to show it to new users rather than returning users, because as you can see, new users are engaging more with the homepage slider than the returning users. It just helps you give them a differential experience. It also helps you remove noise for the returning users or your loyal customers and help them complete different journeys. What I also wanted to talk about is what if you don't have event tracking set up? Where do you begin and what is important for you? What you see here on this slide are two to three different sections. You have call to action, you have content base, and you have user behavior. These are different actions that you can track. For example, if there is a returning user, would I like them to add something to the wish list? Do I want to give them that experience so that it enables them to complete a purchase journey? Similarly, on user behavior, are users going back and forth between different payment methods? Does your returning user prefer a certain kind of payment method that you would like to show them naturally? Are they removing certain products from the cart? And can you optimize your product details based on what products are being removed from the cart most? After we have answered those questions and figure out what happens post-click, it's important to understand where do we focus on the funnel? So once the user has completed a journey, added products to the card, or seen the products, what happens next? This report that we are looking at is called Conversions Report under e-commerce, shopping analysis, shopping behavior. This report is only available as part of enhanced e-commerce. Again, the data can be segmented if needed, and we can provide a mobile segment. The insight that we are looking at here is the leakage percentage in funnel. So you can see how many users open sessions on your website with no shopping activity. What are these users doing? Would be the next question to ask. Then there are users who look at products, but do not add it to the basket. Are we not provi providing them the right product view or the categories or options? Then there are users who add to the pro product cart, but then they abandon the cart. Can we influence these users to come back to the website, whether through promotion, a reminder, a brand loyalty campaign? The idea here is to see this report, apply a mobile segment, and see if you're providing different user experience to users through mobile and through desktop. Are there users who fit in a certain funnel on desktop versus mobile? Would be another insight to look at. The other insight within the same report 
is to really focus on the opportunity area, which is how can you optimize product detail pages to motivate more users to add products? For example, are users interested in certain colors more than more? So if you have a product in various color, would you like to test out which colors sell out more or encourage users to add them to the product card? These are some of the ways to answer the question on behavior of user on your website. What I also find best to support all of this data with intuitive insight is this quote, which is regularly challenge yourselves to complete typical customer journeys, like book tickets to cheapest destination, or buy the perfect winter coat, or find answer to this question within 30 seconds on a mobile website. The idea here is to understand the friction that your customer faces while completing your journey. What can make that smoother? Or how can you enrich the user experience more to have them keep coming back? Some practical tips for maximizing Google Analytics for UX potential is identify the top reports and the top metrics that you will be using. And then make sure that you have a customized mobile first dashboard. Identify data gaps. So what are your micro conversions and macro conversions? What do we want users to do once they're on their web, once they're on our website? And where do you see opportunity for converting more leads identified through the reports? Combine this data and insights. You know your business and its rhythm best. What data do you need to support your website? An insight or prove otherwise? And how can you use existing data to set up a successful A-B test? As mentioned earlier, we've attached some useful resources for you. You can head out to our masterful mobile web on Think with Google to discover some insights and some questions that can help you set a mobile strategy. There's also a setting up of event tracking guide. There's this tiny video that we've attached for people who do not want to go through a web dev article. There's also dashboard creation in Google Analytics and Google Analytics Solutions Gallery, which has user input, different dashboards that you can use to enrich your Google Analytics experience. As an ending note, I just wanted to remind that we will have a live stream on building a measurement plan and understanding important key performance indicators. I hope to see you all there. If you have any questions, please do leave them on our website and we will be covering them on the live stream. Thank you so much for joining us today.